Hello, reading relatives. I hope you all are doing very fabulous on this fabulous day. And I thank you, Kuna'a, for clicking that play button. I will be discussing my very bookish thoughts, likes, and loves of Wab Geshek Rice's Moon of the Crusted Snow. So, alrighty then, let's get started. <laughs> Welcome! I hope you guys are all warm and you're all chilling out with your favorite beverage or snack. And if you are hungry, just go ahead and head into my kitchen and go grab something to eat. I think, pretty sure we have leftovers or snacks and tons of stuff in there. So help yourself. <laughs> go eat. <laughs> Quick snap recap. Moon of the Crested Snow is written by Wab Geshek Rice, an Anishinaabe author from Wasaksing First Nation. And this book is a dystopian, apocalyptic, indigenous fiction novel. And there is a second book that is not far behind, Jeanne. That one's for you, Neil. <laughs> this book follows mainly two characters. Evan and his wife Nicole. So Evan is the protagonist. Evan is Anishinaabe and he is learning the cultural and traditional teachings of his people. It is very apparent in the first few pages and he's praying and I was like, what? Rice, are you spying on how I pray? <laughs> Because you can see that Evan is really pushing himself to learn and practice his culture. And those few, page, those few pages, those first few pages, even him, Evan, scolding himself about what he's not doing right. And all, all like, even with just him praying or how, what he should be doing. And that made me smile and feel good because I was thinking, wow, I'm already going to connect to this story story so i was like oh yeah then of course you guys all know all hell breaks loose the power goes out the cell phones don't work and like john snow said winter is coming and honestly it was funny how the community wasn't all that freaked out about what was happening in the very beginning because Things like that happen all the time <laughs> in my community on the res, especially during like when weather is being all crazy with rain or snow. And I, I, I don't mean to generalize, but where I am at, it does. Like some when it's raining or there's a huge storm, the power goes out. And I don't know, sometimes even during now, I hear my kids yelling, Mom, the internet's out. I got kicked off our Zoom class. Oh man, must be Monday. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, even even our cell phone service, it sucks. It even like I explained in my my um my book review video, I was saying how crappy the cell service is here, but also the internet. The internet's not great at all. Sometimes it takes me a whole night to upload a 15 minute video sometimes when I hit that upload button I just go to bed because I I'm not even gonna wait for it because it just takes so long then everybody goes crazy right they're panicking kind of like those COVID first few months that the whole United States where food was disappearing from the shelves like crazy and that chapter kind of a, a unsettled me when the, when the college boys Nick and Kevin they come back and they start talking about what happened in Gibbs which is a town where they were in college at that part was a bit horrifying and I was blazing through those pages I was very probably very blue in the face at the end of that chapter because I probably didn't breathe that whole time <laughs> so the community is already experiencing a lot in such a short span of time and then Scott comes right like kind of like first contact wink wink and that character to me, sort of was representative of settler colonialism, right? Like the nice greeting in the beginning, hey, slowly kind of like edging their way in and then things gradually getting oppressive. 
and even aggressive. Scott, in that part of the book, he is just basically a bully. He's aggressive in his actions and his words and his presence, but he's also an important character because with him, we also see the internal oppression and trauma that this indigenous community has in in and we see them in the characters like Evan's own brother or how some of the community they begin to pick sides and they it, they begin to divide and lastly that scene with the hinted but not confirmed cannibalism i think we all know that while reading it we know what's happening but that shame that Evan's brother felt Cam that was his name and then Scott trying to knock down Evan in those moments. So I'm going to read it really quick. Okay, so this is a part where Scott and Evan are, are talking back and forth. Evan exhaled forcefully and let his own shoulder settle as if he were about to squeeze a trigger with a moose in sight. We were okay without you and we'll be okay without you. We've been up here longer than you, been. Scott squinted. Is that a threat, Ev? We don't need you, Scott. Bullshit. We know this land. I doubt that. Maybe you guys do, not the rest of the deadbeats here. It's in all of them. They know it. Don't get all Indian on me now. Evan softened his tone and bared his palms in Scott's direction. Why did you come here anyway? Doesn't matter. I'm here now. What are you running from? Your boy saw what was happening down there. Why do you think it'd be better here? That part and that piece... When I was reading it, maybe it struck me as being like, whoa. And I thought that part to be very powerful because Scott is trying to diminish them and, and make them small and little. But Evan, he's not having it. He, sh he stands up bec because he, Evan, is secure in his own and, and also in his people's strength and in their resilience. And it's really awesome to see that Evan is sort of representative of our people who see that strength and live that strength. And even though we that strength may be a little bit insecure at times because we're still learning, but it's there. And I saw that in Evan and we we know as indigenous peoples we come from very very deep roots strong roots that are planted in this land and are, and also that are planted in the knowledge and the life ways and the traditions and and everything else that we carry right and especially our young people i see that that young people's strength all the time in the in um, the indigenous book reviewer community, they are some very strong people and I learn so much from them all the time. <sighs> the hardest hitting parts of this book were, were two things. One of them was the dreams, which I talked about a little bit and mildly in my review video. I think the dreams that the group and certain characters were having were my favorite parts. That imagery and the feeling that went along with those dreams were were very clear in my head. And they were spiritual almost and, and culturally spiritual. Especially when Nicole dreamt about her falling through the snow. And honestly, I feel like that sometimes. That I'm not learning anything fast enough that I'm not learning the language or I'm not learning quick enough how things are supposed to go, like the certain rituals during a ceremony or the whys or the meaning of everything because it because it's a lot. And to me, sometimes that may feel overwhelming, like kind of like Nicole and just falling into that snow. But my kids, they are picking it up so quick and they are happy to give me that confidence and that motivation to keep going so I try not to be so hard on myself so that was a connection that I felt with Nicole during um, one of the dreams that she had the the second thing that hit me pretty hard was the death of Eileen the the older auntie and she was one of the old one of the oldest um, elders in in Evan's community and to read about how that death really affected Evan also affected me because I couldn't help but to think of 
my grandma and all the elders and and my aunties and my kids well mainly my grandma my saya or my kids kuku saya and just all of our elders especially during this time during covid when we lose an elder even before covid their their death was it, it, it's taken very hard and we are losing more than just a life we are losing histories we're losing language we're losing knowledge we're losing life skills traditional knowledge customs we're losing humor and that's and those very much needing needed stories and we're losing a lot i could have understood why the conclusion fell flat for some people i mean in the beginning when i read it it, it felt like that to me too but once i re-evaluated re and read over those last i think couple of chapters it was really beautiful the familiarity and simplicity and simply that life continues life just goes on and no matter what negative things happen or what bad things happen there is no crazy realization the world simply just doesn't stop turning and it, it's kind of like that with the seasons, right? Winter doesn't wait for anybody. It doesn't wait for us to get ready. And we, we simply move on. And so, But at the end, like with the epilogue, when spring comes, people continue living. We, we just continue to learn and build ourselves and learn from our mistakes and try not to take our gifts especially those cultural gifts and that cultural knowledge for granted because it, it gives us a lot more than what we may think and i was so happy <laughs> to hear that there is a second book coming out and i think i read a post from indigenous bookstagrammer his name is neil and he's the one who said who, or he shared it on his stories that there was going to be a second book to this. I think it was like a news post or something. I don't remember. But I hope that that book is filled with just as much culture and reflection that this one delivered. And I'll be definitely looking forward to that. And I, I'm crossing my fingers that I'm able to get an advanced reader's copy of that. That would be so excellent. <sighs> okay, so I am done with this discussion and I am so happy to have read that book and that book is actually was recommended to me by Erin from Erin's library and once she said yeah you gotta read this book this is pretty good so I was like okay so I picked it up right away as soon as I could so thank you Erin for this book recommendation it was really good good stuff I shall leave you all here and I hope you guys are all having a great day. I want you guys to be safe. Don't forget to wash your hands and wear a mask and all that really awesome stuff. So until next time, I shall see you soon. And I hope you guys are all well. All right. Bye.